Some time ago while I was serving the Lord, I was knocking on doors, getting to know people, uh, telling them about faith and repentance, turning to know God, have a relationship with Him. The goal was to help people to be baptized, help them to come unto their Savior, to know Him personally, to make a covenant and a promise to Him, uh, a witness that they are willing to follow in His ways and to keep His commandments. And that was that was the goal. That was what we were doing. Um, and uh, this guy, Elder Summers, and I knocked on this door. And I said that th- this was his door. I, I was doing most of the talking, most of the knocking. I said, okay, you, you know what to do. This is your door. And he knocked on the door. And this, this older gentleman came to the door. It was a green trailer uh, that they lived in. And... He came to the door and he said, oh, we already have Jesus. We are good. And frequently, uh, whenever somebody would say this to me, I would say, and you could tell that this is like a good house to talk to people. It it had a powerful spirit of the Lord upon it. And that's that's part of the reason why I asked Elder Summers to knock on the door because I knew he would have success here. And the spirit witnessed to me that this is the this is a house that we should talk to the people, and they said, "Oh, we have Jesus already. We are doing, we are doing great." I said, "Great. How are you saved?" And uh, he looked at me. He said, "Well, do you have a minute?" And I said, "Yes." And so he he told me his story, and his story is very remarkable. His name is Bill, and that is the story that I'm going to relate to you. Now he said that. He had worked in an industry with asbestos, and this asbestos over time had caused major problems in his lungs, and he had like 90% damage, and he was having a hard time breathing. Furthermore, his back had crumpled up. All the muscles had tightened so that he was in intense back pain, and all of his fingers had been curled up so that he couldn't use them he couldn't function and he was absolutely miserable and that was not the man that i was meeting but he was relating this story to me you see the thing about faith and healing and to be healed is it's it's actually a very personal thing the only person that really knows that you're suffering is yourself everybody else looks at you and can't really tell that you have foot pain or or uh, a depression or an arm injury that that hurts you daily nobody knows your chronic pain except for yourself and so nobody also knows your miraculous healing except for yourself healing really is a personal witness from the lord to you individually and no matter how many people testify to an individual about the healing power of our lord and savior You have to receive that witness yourself in order to really understand and believe it. And my testimony to you is that's possible, and I can share my stories of healing too, but let's start with Bill's. Now, Bill came to the door, and he he was explaining his situation. And this is an older guy. He's he's in his 70s when when I met him years ago. And I think he was saying that he was in his 60s when when this healing had happened to him. But... But he was doing horrible and his lungs were hurting and all of his back and muscles were in uh, chronic spasm so that they they couldn't be used and were in intense pain. And so he he arose from bed and he was planning on killing himself at the beginning of the year. He he was saying uh, and telling others that he was fixing to quit if nothing changed by January. And as he arose for the day and he got his daily coffee out of the kitchen the tv was on and that was that was unusual that it was just on and it was turned to this pastor the pastor uh the christian channel and bill thought oh that that's really strange i don't uh i don't watch that kind of stuff so he turned it off and uh went to do some things in the kitchen came back into the room and the tv was on and he thought, okay, that, that was weird. And he turned it back off. Um, and uh, then went back to his back room, came back out to the living room, and the TV was on. 
to this Christian channel with this pastor named Benny Hen. And, and he said, well, I guess uh, that's probably s something I should pay attention to. So he sat down in his armrest chair right in front of uh, his TV. And he, he said he was sitting there watching the show, uh, paying a little bit of attention. And at the very end of the show, Benny said, all right, we're going to do healing now. There is a man out there. Uh, you have asbestos poisoning in your lungs. Uh, your, your back and all of your muscles are in intense spasm and pain. And you've t told the Lord, uh, you've t told people that you're going to end your life by the end of the year. Um, if this is you, raise your hands and say this prayer with me and you will be healed. And Bill looked around his living room and uh, decided that there was no one else that he could be talking to. And so he said, what, what the hey? And he lifted up his hands, said the prayer along with Benny Hinn, and was miraculously healed. And he, he relates it as his back straightened, his, arm, his fingers straightened as he looked at them. And he stood straight up for the first time in years from his chair. Now, Barbara, his wife, uh, was outside at the time and heard a yell from inside from Bill. And so she came running in, Bill, what's wrong? What's, what's going on? Thinking that he had fallen and just became disabled permanently. Uh, and Bill... Bill said, I can touch my toes. And Barbara thought, oh no, like he is paralyzed. Uh, he's in deep trouble. And she said, okay, what, what's wrong? What happened? And Bill... 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 Bill said, I found the Lord Jesus. And he healed me. And... And he was jumping in the air and swinging his arms and moving it all around. And Barbara, Barbara said, praise the Lord for neither of them were really believers before that. Now, when I met Bill, he said he had found the Lord Jesus, and he related this story to me. Uh, over time, he related this story to me because we developed a relationship. He said, you know, we aren't interested in what you have to say, but uh, you could come to our prayer meeting on Thursdays. Every Thursday we do uh, a prayer circle. And I said, I would love to do that. Uh, I always kept in mind that, you know, I could be wrong with my religion. I was pretty well convinced that I had the truth because it's a pretty convincing truth that I carried at that time. And it is true. A lot of, a lot of the message that I contained uh, was powerful um, knowledge to share as well. But I recognize that everybody has something to teach me. And I wanted to be open-minded. And I also wanted to hold the possibility that maybe I was wrong. And so I said, I will be there. And we came to Bill's apartment and as we did so we got to know him and know know that story that I just related to you and they were now doing a healing ministry and Bill showed me his paper of 3,000 people that they had documented that they would pray for it and at and then they would have the result. And this is just a phone ministry. People would call in and they would pray for them and then they would hear back. And these people would report what kind of healing they had. And they were active in the Pentecostal church uh, close by here in uh, this place called Emmett, Idaho, uh, which is no longer around. And they would go on crusades they would go to california uh and they live very humbly in this trailer but they would have a garage sale raise some money uh for like a plane flight and fly to different churches and tell their story and then do healing um and, and bill was very remarkable 
the things that he shared with me. And I would like to share some of those with you now. Now, Bill uh, held out this ointment jar. And he says, you see this? This is uh, oil. Smell it. It smells like baby's breath. And sure enough. And he said, this is what I anoint people with. And I never refill it. It fills back on its own. And every time he would go around ministering to people, he would... uh, anoint them with oil and lay hands on them and pray for them and he said uh, there was some miraculous things and he would tell people his story so so they could have faith in the ability to be healed by our savior and through his power and through his blood um, because if if Christ through his blood was resurrected as the the first the power of resurrection is a complete transformation and perfection of a body well the Lord can do that just for whatever ailment that you have. And Bill was really a catalyst for my own healings, uh, own major healings of diseases that they thought were impossible to heal. Um, and at that time, I, I had uh, been playing basketball early in uh, this time of serving the Lord. And my back had gone out, and I was in pain. Pain to, on a scale of 1 to 10, was at like an 8. And I was hobbling around for a month or two. And I said, I either need to get healed, or I need to go home and die. Because my my life was just absolutely miserable. And so, learning these things from Bill set me out on a quest to know the Lord and His ability to heal and I studied those scriptures in the Bible, every one of them on a healing, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. And I came to the understanding, a powerful witness, that Christ healed every single person. He healed all sicknesses, all diseases, everybody that came to him, he healed. There was no one he turned away. And I realized that he gave that power to his servants. And he said the same thing. Go into all the world and uh, cast out devils, heal the sick, poison will not harm you. And the promises were still valid and real. And he's the same as he was then. He is now. He's a resurrected being who's given power to his servants. And the power of his blood and resurrection still exists. And so I knew that I could have my back healed if I had sufficient faith. And I think the way that we can gain sufficient faith is by hearing the faith of others and believing strong enough that it can be done and figuring out a way for it to be done, perhaps through someone else or through the Spirit directly. As we hear His voice, He will guide us. As we learn to hear His voice, He will guide us. So I, I sought a blessing, and I, I sought it from the, the people closest to me. Um, at that time, there was this kid named Elder Roberts, and there was a family that I just adored, and they were so good to uh, my friend and I. And so I, I asked them, uh, with Elder Roberts, to lay their hands upon me and pronounce a healing blessing in the name of Christ for my back to heal. And as soon as uh, this individual laid their hands upon me, um, Elder Roberts, and pronounced this blessing, it was a, it was like a snap. There was no noise, but the tears poured out of my eyes. I stepped up from the chair that I was sitting in and said, "I am healed," and I was healed. My my lower back had no more pain. It had no more pain for for many months. And there, there's there's a difference between being healed and being made whole. So if, if we are wholly consecrated to the Lord from, our, our, from the time that we're healed, we will stay healed and whole. Remember the people 
the lepers that uh the ten lepers they say and petition Christ to be healed and he healed every one of them he said go to the priests according to the law of Moses and testify that you are clean and healed one of them turned around which means to turn is another word for repents repentance one of them repented and said thank you thank you to the Lord and the Lord said were there not were there not uh, ten or the nine go and be whole it's when we return to the Lord and turn turn to him completely that we are made whole and as lo long as we stay turned to him completely he will sustain whatever healing he has blessed us with that's been my testimony and there's much more to Bill's story and my story on healing but that's probably sufficient for now.